Hey guys, it is Enigma Hood. So, today I'm going to tackle this, in my opinion, an idiotic question. I mean, it can be a good question if it's, if it's a genuine question. But most of the time, it comes from these dumbass fucktard creationists. And of course the question is, why aren't human beings evolving now? Usually these dumbass creationists, they, they like to... Uh, basically demonstrate their own stupidity by asking this question. They're like, oh, well, if evolution's true, why aren't we evolving now? Hmm? I'm a dumb fuck. Well, the question presumes that we're not evolving in the first place. And, I mean, there's some truth to it, to that. I'll get into that uh, later. Um, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is that um, there are a variety of different mechanisms for evolution, and you have to understand the mechanisms of evolution in the first place to even understand the answer. In fact, if you understood evolution, you could probably an under, uh, answer this question yourself. But I will indulge the masses and, and, and try to address the question. This is also closely related to um, uh, the, the question of why, why is there only one race or one subspecies of human being? Remember, when we say the word human, it actually refers to our genus, Homo. And there is only one species and one subspecies of human left on this planet. And that's our species, Homo sapiens sapiens. Uh, a lot of dumbass racist pieces of shit or uneducated morons believe that race exists. And that, in human beings at least. And that there's black people, there's white people, there's Asian people. No, these are not different species. These are not different subspecies. These are not different sub 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 subspecies. There's no such thing. Um, we are all the same exact species and subspecies. <clears throat> so I'm going to take on that question as well. Why is that? Why is there only one subspecies of Homo sapiens uh, of human? Well, first uh, let's let's talk about. Um, why human beings are supposedly not evolving. Well, uh, I think the, the relevant um, mechanisms of evolution that we should talk about would be gene flow and natural selection. Let's see, anything else I need? No. Uh, the, the other two major mechanisms of evolution would be genetic drift and uh, mutation. Now, genetic drift and mutation, that we're still subjected to that uh, 100%. Um, but in terms of natural selection and gene flow, well, natural selection uh, promotes speciation, whereas gene flow inhibits speciation. What is gene flow? Gene flow is basically fucking other people and spreading your genes around. And the more and more you fuck around with people, uh, the more homogeneous the population becomes. Um, the thing is, is that in our society, there is nothing barring human beings from going to the other side of the planet, <clears throat> crossing all kinds of physical obstacles, mountains, deserts, oceans, none of that is a barrier anymore. So you could travel to Japan, for example, fuck as many uh, people as you want and produce fertile offspring, and that is gene flow. So basically the populations are no longer isolated. And really isolation's the key for speciation. You, when you have gene flow, people into these different populations fucking each other all the time, that does inhibit speciation. I'm not saying, though, that um, species, uh, that we, we aren't seeing at least some isolation. There are some isolated groups, no doubt about that. But definitely I can say that um, uh, uh, gene flow is occurring much more uh, often now than it ever has before in the past. Uh, because we have technology. You can hop on an airplane and go wherever you want and fuck as many times as you want and produce all the offspring you want. <clears throat> and that inhibits speciation. The other thing is a natural selection, of course. And natural selection promotes speciation. Now, are we still subjected to natural selection? I mean, I would argue if we, if we are, it's, too, it's, it's mitigated tremendously than it was before. Because we have technology protecting us from all of the bad things that the environment normally would do to us. We're not living in the fucking jungles of Africa anymore. We're living in peaceful society. Every time you're hungry, you go to fucking Burger King and you get something to fucking eat. Alright, it's as simple as that. If you're in the fucking woods and you need to eat, you need to fucking hunt for it or find it. 
And that is hard as fuck. You are at the mercy of the environment. In civilization, it's not like that. And it's the same thing with domesticated animals. You know, no matter what, they, they won't, as long as they have a human being taking care of them, they will be well fed and, and nourished and all that stuff. Okay? We have technology that is allowing us to survive in environments that normally would kill us. Okay, we're able to survive in extreme cold temperatures. Because, I mean, look at our fucking bodies. It's like a fucking, like, smooth skin piece of shit. It's not, it's a tropical body. Okay, it's not designed to live in these cold environments. It's designed to live in Africa. Uh, which is where we came from. So, I mean, that makes complete sense. It doesn't make sense anywhere else. Well, how did we survive in these colder environments? We hunted other animals and used their fur to cover our bodies. That is technology. Uh, taking the fur of another animal and wearing it, that is actually technology, and that protected our ancestors. Of course, today we have fucking coats and wool coats and everything, and heaters and houses. All kinds of technology protect us from the cold. So normally the cold would kill us. And then we also have other technology that protects us from other extreme environments as well, and other conditions. So, you know, I'm not saying that uh, we're completely absolved from natural selection, but you, you have to agree that it is tremendously mitigated. And uh, that definitely inhibits speciation. And then there's, of course, the obvious uh, fact that we only, Homo sapiens have only left Africa about 70,000 years ago. That is not a long time ago at all. Our species left Africa and then 70,000 years ago, and then prolifer proliferated across the entire planet in such a short period of time. It was unbelievable how fast we were able to spread out in that short period of time. It's just not enough time for evolution to uh, take place and, and for the populations to speciate. However, what we do observe is that there are some slight physical differences between human populations that live in different parts of the world. In case you didn't notice, I'm a little bit darker than the average white guy, and the average white guy is a little bit lighter than the average African. Um, <clears throat> these are just very minor differences, but it is a direct result of evolution nonetheless. Um, East Asians, uh, of course, have that distinctive eye. Uh, it's, um, it's a combination of the epicanthic fold, uh, which is a fold that uh, covers the, the inner corner of the eye, and uh, a single eyelid. Um, actually, you know, human babies oftentimes have an epicanthic fold that covers the, the inner corners of the eye. And, um, but that is lost when the baby grows up into adulthood. For some reason, that trait was retained in East Asians, Chinese people, Japanese people. And, that was, and that's also combined with the single eyelid. Um, you know, people like me, oh, some white people, I, I should say most white people, and also Africans, they usually have a double eyelid, and they don't have the epicanthic fold. Um, now you might be wondering, well, where did this, where did this come about? What caused it to evolve? Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I think it is a, a result of. It, it might have been a result of sexual selection. Um, there is some evidence. Uh, it's kind of sketchy. I, I, I've been researching it a little bit, but I'm not entirely confident. But some people have suggested that. Uh, the epicanthic fold and single eyelid do confer some uh, protection to the eye from sunlight and things like that. Um, it probably is a, a matter of sexual selection, if I were to guess, uh, and it might have been a case of genetic drift. Um, now, there is also an interesting uh, question, did they acquire, did the Asians acquire the epicanthic fold or the retention of the epicanthic, epicanthic fold into adulthood and then single eyelid? Uh, did they acquire that from um, Homo erectus, which inhabited Asia before Sapiens came? That I don't know. Uh, it's an interesting question. Um, I don't think they, they really know if Erectus had those kinds of eyes in Asia. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's currently a mystery, as far as I can tell. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, that's that. Now, uh... As to why, as for the question is, why is there only one subspecies of human being left? I mean, after all, I just mentioned another different species of, say, of a homo, of a human, and that's Erectus. And there was also Homo neanderthalus that lived in Europe. 
uh, at around the same time. So the, we have three different species of human being living on the same planet at the same time. You know, a lot of people have the, the, the misconception that we evolved from, from Neanderthalus. That's not correct. We did not evolve from Homo Neanderthalus. We didn't. Uh, we probably evolved from another animal <coughs> called Homo uh, ergaster. That's probably what we evolved from. Um, some people say we might have evolved from Erectus, but at the same time, you know, Erectus and Sapiens did coexist on the same planet as well. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we didn't evolve from Erectus. We might have, but uh, the scientific consensus seems to agree that we evolved from Ergaster. And that Erectus and Neanderthals were different species. Well, the question is, why isn't there more than one species on this planet? Well, think about it. I mean, uh, if you have, like, a super animal that doesn't reproduce often, that reproduces slowly, just like us, then, and it's able to proliferate across the entire planet very quickly, then you would see only one species of this animal. Like, if there, imagine if it was like a super wolf. Like, we have so many different kinds of wolves right now, right? So many different species of wolf. If you had one super wolf that was able to proliferate across the entire planet very quickly, you probably would see the same exact thing. There would only be one species and subspecies of wolf at that time. There wouldn't be any dogs. There wouldn't be any arctic wolf. It would just be one species of wolf because it would invade other territories occupied by the other wolves and they would be competing over the same exact resources. So that would put them into direct conflict with them. And, you know, they would wipe them out and then, uh, you know, rape whoever was left. And that's probably what our ancestors did. A good way of, of looking at something in recent history that has occurred. Um, look at what the British and the Spanish did when they came to America. Uh, the British had a different kind of ideology than the Spanish did. The British brought their wives with them, or their whoever the fuck these women were, the, the bitches that they fucked when they came to America. Uh, whereas the Spanish, they were encouraged to rape. I refuse to say marry. They were encouraged to rape the indigenous population. So what do you see? The white people that came to the North American continent, uh, they pretty much displaced the Native Americans there and uh, replaced them with their own kind, white people. That's why white people mostly in inhabit the United States and Canada. Um, <clears throat> I mean, there is still some, you'll see, like, the average white person does have some uh, Native American genes in them, certainly. So that's probably what happened with the with sapiens when they interacted with Erectus and Neanderthalus. Whereas with the Spanish, uh, since they didn't bring their women with them, you see a much more... Uh, uh, you see greater amounts of mixture between the whites and the Native Americans. That's the big difference. So it's, it's pretty reasonable to conclude that our sapiens ancestors, when they came into conflict, and I should say contact and conflict, with Erectus and Neanderthalus, uh, they brought their wives with them too. And so they killed, they probably raped as well, but they also fucked their sapien women that they brought with them. That's probably what happened. And so they displaced those populations of Erectus and Neanderthalus. Um, that's basically it. Uh, that is why, you know, there are some inhibitions to evolution. There are, there, there's plenty of good reasons why we are the only uh, species of human on this planet. So where do we go from here? Do we rely on natural evolution to, e uh, to allow us to evolve naturally and adapt to the environment? No, I, I always think this is a stupid thing that people are like asking, you know, what are we going to evolve into? I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. It's really dumb to rely on natural evolution when we are completely aware of evolution and we know how to modify genes. That is what we need to do. We need to artificially evolve ourselves because we know what we want. We don't care what nature wants to select for because we're not even subjected to natural selection as much as we were. And once we spread out to other planets and start colonizing the solar system and uh, Mars... <clears throat> we're going to have to change our bodies. That is the first step. We need to implement genetic engineering and gene therapy because our bodies are a piece of fucking shit. Okay? I want to touch upon this fully in another video, but I do want to mention this. Uh, that is the reason why obesity is such a problem in America. We have the same exact primitive, savage bodies 
that we had when we were in the jungles of Africa. Our bodies don't know that we're in modern civilization. That is why we crave all these fatty foods and want to eat all these sugary things. Because, and that's why our bodies store all this crap as fat when we just sit on our asses. That is the reason why, because our bodies think we're living in Africa. Our bodies are not designed for civilization. That's why we, the, the solution to obesity is not fucking these stupid after-school programs and exercising 24-7. You know, the solution is uh, gene therapy and genetic engineering. It's as simple as that. You have to, have, you have to genetically engineer a civilized body to live in a civilized world. You can't take the monkey out of the jungle... You can take the monkey out of the jungle, but you can't take the monk, the jungle out of the monkey. That fucking saying. That's used by racists, but it's actually, it's actually relevant in this situation. We have uh, jungle genes. There's just no way around it. And that applies to everyone. Anyway, that's it. This is Enigma Hood signing off.